Hello everybody, I'm Josue Obregón and as a part of the 2020 winter study of the Industrial Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, I will introduce the method of scope rules presented in the section 5.8 of the Machine Learning Explainability book by Christoph Molnar. So first, the name of the technique is actually anchors and it was presented by the same authors that present the line method studied in the last section. Anchors is a model agnostic method that explains individual predictions from any black box classification model. The name comes from the analogy that the rule anchors a prediction if changes in, in other future values do not affect the prediction. The anchors approach deploys a perturbation-based strategy to generate local explanations for predictions of black box machine learning models. It receives an instance X to be explained and it generates easy to understand if then rules called anchors. These rules are reusable since they are scope. Anchors include the notion of coverage, stating precisely to which other possibly unseen instances they apply. The techniques included in the method are the data perturbation as in their line method, a reinforcement learning method called multi-arm bandit, and a graph search algorithm, specifically beam search. In their paper, the authors compare both of their algorithms and visualize how differently line and anchors explore an instance's neighborhood to derive results. For this, the following picture the depicts both line and anchors locally explaining a complex binary classifier, which predicts either negative or positive class. The gray line shows the linear decision boundary of the surrogate models generated by line. The red and blue square denotes the boundaries of the rules generated by the anchors. Using Two exemplary instances, line results do not indicate how faithfully they are as line solely learns a linear decision boundary that best approximates the model given a perturbation, space D. Given the same perturbation, space D, the anchor's approach constructs explanations whose coverage is adapt to the model's behavior and clearly express their boundaries. Thus. They are faithfully by design and state exactly for which instances they are valid. This property makes anchors particular, particularly intuitive and easy to comprehend. The following simple example illustrates the result produced by the method. For instance, suppose that we are given a bivariate black box model that predicts whether or not a passenger survives the Titanic disaster. Now, we would like to know why the model predicts for one specific individual that it survives or not. The table on the left is our given instance that we want to explain. It was a 20-year-old female who traveled first class. The square on the right shows the generated anchor or rule, which is an easy to interpret rule with a precision and coverage measure. The result shows which attributes were taken into account by the model, which in this case is the female sex and the first class ticket. The anchor additionally tells us that it applies to 15% of perturbation space instances. In those cases, the explanations are 97% accurate, meaning that the display predicates are almost exclusively responsible for the predicted outcome. Now, uh, let's see the formal definition. An anchor A uh, is formally defined with this expression, wherein X represents the instance being explained. For example, a row in a tabular dataset, A is a set of predicates. F denotes the classification model to be explained. And DX of A indicates the distribution of neighbors of X that match the predicates on A. And uh, there is a parameter tau between 0 and y and 1, which specifies a precision threshold. So only rules that achieve a local fidelity of at least tau are considered a valid result.
so we can say that an anchor A is uh, considered an anchor, a predicate A is considered an anchor if the expectation of evaluating the neighbors of the perturbations on D with respect of the conditional distribution when the rule A applies is greater than parameter tau, given that all the predicates are true. Now let's describe in detail the method to finding anchors. First, let us think for a moment in the common definition of precision and coverage of a rule. The coverage of a rule is the proportion of examples covered by a rule, and the precision of a rule is the proportion of examples correct classified by a rule. So now let's see the problem definition of finding anchors. Given a black box classifier F, an instance X, a distribution D, and the desired level of precision tau, the precision is defined as the expectation of the number of correctly evaluated neighbors of perturbations in D. However, computing that precision directly is infeasible because it will require evaluating the indicator function for all sets belonging to the conditional distribution when the rule A applies. For this reason, the authors introduce a probabilistic definition, obtaining the probability that the precision of the greater than tau is greater than 1 minus the, a new parameter, a new hyperparameter delta. If multiple anchors satisfy this precision, the coverage definition is introduced, which is defined as the expectation of the number of samples in D when the rule A applies. Finally, the search of an anchor is a combinatorial optimization problem in which the maximum coverage of A is found subject to the probability that the precision being greater than tau is greater than 1 minus delta. Thus, the rule that has the highest coverage among all eligible rules that satisfy the precision threshold given the probabilistic definition is chosen. These rules are thought to be more important as they describe a large part of the model. The anchors approach uses four main components to find explanation. The first one is candidate generation. In this phase, the method generates new explanation candidates. In the first round, one candidate per future X gets created and fixes the respective value of possible perturbations. In every other round, the best candidates of the previous round are extended one future predicate that is not yet contained. Be the second phase is the best candidate in identification. Candidate rules are to be compared in regard to which rule explains X the best. To this end, perturbations that match the currently observed rule are created, evaluated by calling the model. However, these calls need to be minimized as to limit computational overhead. This is why at the core of this component, there is a pure exploration multi-arm multi bandit method. Multi-arm bandit are used to efficiently explore and exploit different strategies using sequential selection. The strategies are called arms in analogy to slot machines. In the given setting, each candidate rule is to be seen as an arm that can be pulled. Each time is pulled, respective neighbors get evaluated, and more information about the candidate rules payoff is obtained. The payoff is the precision measure. In Anchor's case, the, the precision does state how well the, role, the rule describes the instances to be explained. The next step is the candidate precision validation, which evaluates the best rule if the best rule has a precision greater than tau to finally return the candidate rule with the best coverage. All of these components are assembled into a beam search, which is a graph search algorithm and a variant of the breadth first algorithm. It carries the B parameter, uh, the B best candidates of each round over the next one. 
B is called the beam width parameter. These B best rules are then used to create new rules. The approach efficiently derives statistically sound information about why any system classified an instance the way it did. It systematically experiments with the model's input and concludes by observing respective outputs. Now let's see uh, some, uh, one example of tabular data. The first example used the bike rental data. For this example, the classification problem is turned into a regression problem. And a random forest is trained as a black box model. The problem is defined as to classify whether the number of rented bicycles lies above or below the train line. But before creating an, an anchor explanation, a perturbation function needs to be defined. An easy way to do so is to use an intuitive default perturbation space for tabular explanation cases, which can be built by sampling from the training data. For example, in this, if we have this instance X that we want to be explained. Uh, when we perturb um, the instance, the futures values uh, that are subject to an anchors predicates are maintained while the non-fixed features are replaced with values taken from another randomly sampled instances with a specified probability. In this way, they resemble neighbors. The results are easy to interpret. Each bar represents an instance explanation. In this case, we have six instance explanation, and in this case, we have two. On the right, we can see, on the left side, we can see the predicted class for each group of instances. In this case, the below cases, and in this case, the above cases. And we can also see the number of bikes rent. The features are depicted in the bottom legend uh, with different color, and the predicate for that feature is inside each of the square. For example, most of these instances use the temperature uh, future to make the prediction and the value the values in which uh, are used are included inside the, the rectangle for example this one um, it has uh, 40 predicted bike uh, rentals if the temperature is uh, less than zero when it is very cold The x-axis depicts the rule's precision and the bar thickness corresponds to its coverage. These anchors show that the model mainly considers temperature for predictions in the, in the uh, cases of the right. However, in the cases on the, on the left, sorry, uh, in the cases on the right, we can see some instances that uh, where the model didn't decide with much confidence about its prediction. We can see that the coverage is very low compared with the at least 20% coverage in the right side. In such cases, anchors get more specific and it comprises more features and apply to fewer instances, as we can see here. So the advantages of using the anchors method, uh, first, it's very easy to interpret. It's easy to understand as rules are easy to interpret. Furthermore, uh, it, the rules even state a measure of importance by including the notion of coverage. Second, the anchors approach works um, when model predictions are non-linear or complex in an instance's neighborhood as the approach deploys reinforcement learning techniques instead of feeding surrogate models, it is less likely to underfit the model. The algorithm is model agnostic and thus it's applicable to any kind of model. And finally, it's highly efficient as it can be parallelized by making use of multi-arm bandits that support batch sampling, such as batch SAR. Now the disadvantages. The algorithm suffers from a highly configurable and impactful setup, just like most perturbation-based explainers. Not only do hyperparameters such as the beam width or precision threshold need to be tuned 
to yield meaningful results, but also does the perturbation function need to be explicitly designed for one domain or use case. Also, many scenarios require discretization, as otherwise results are too specific, have low coverage and do not contribute to understanding the model. While discretization can help, it may also blur decision boundaries if used carelessly and thus have the op exact opposite effect. Constructing anchors require many calls to the machine learning model, just like all perturbation-based explainers. While the algorithm uses multi-arm bandits to minimize the number of calls, its runtime still very much depends on the model's performance and is therefore highly variable. Lastly, the notion of coverage is undefined in some domains. For example, there is no obvious or universal definition of how super, super pixels in one image compare to such in other images. Finally, uh, there are currently two implementations available. Anchor uh, Python package that is also integrated uh, in the Alibi package and Java and a Java implementation. The first one is the Anchors Algorithms Authors Reference, this one. And the latter is a high performance implementation with, which comes with an R interface called Anchor J. Anchors, sorry. So thank you very much.